Thomas Halter. I am the Chief Product Officer at Evolution Gaming, and we focus on live casino products. That's all we do. We don't do slots or sports book or anything else. We're solely focused on that. And uh, since I joined about five years ago, it's been an incredible ride. Uh, most of the metrics in the company have about increased by something like a thousand percent. And it's almost every single metric has, has grown at that level. So you've got like, like uh, uh, GGR, player counts, bet counts, almost every single metric you can think of has uh, been on this sort of incredible ride. Uh, even the number of employees has gone from something around like maybe like 800 to currently around 8,000 or so. With respect to our international operations, um, we're sort of all over the world. Our major operation is in Riga, Latvia, followed by Tbilisi, Georgia, uh, we're in Malta, that's where we run our international studios. Uh, we deal in 18 spoken languages in Malta, because uh, players like to play in their own language. Um, we're in Romania, we're in New Jersey, we're in Vancouver, we've got a couple of other studios scattered around the world and uh, expanding, <laughs> expanding just about every quarter. Uh, right now, I think we have about six or 7,000 um, uh, dealers, or as we call them, game hosts or game presenters. And uh, then there's another maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people uh, to run the rest of the company. So it's a pretty big force. Our competitors, that's kind of an interesting question, and I have a bit of a unique take on that one. Um, I don't view it as other companies making games. I view it as other things that people do indoors, and particularly on their phones, which means YouTube, Facebook, video game companies, uh, Netflix, these are our major competitors because they're what players would be doing if they're not playing Evolution's games. And I think that's a really healthy way to think about it because um, if you view them as your competition, it's just a tougher competitive set. And so it forces us to run faster, uh, think deeper, provide stronger products that can compete with Tiger King or whatever crazy new show is on Netflix or something. And um, and all of those are increasingly customized just for your tastes. And so, um, yeah, when, when we think about competition, that's, uh, that, that's really how we think about it. Um, and why would somebody prefer us over maybe Netflix or something? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is we are the only one of all those that I mentioned that might actually pay you to be entertained. It doesn't always work out that way, but oftentimes it does. And, um, then I would say it's, uh, we're live, and there's something really fresh about live. And we're 100% video, which is all the rage. Um, if you look at like Facebook, for example, it has increasingly moved towards video. Uh, the hottest app in the world right now, which is TikTok, is a 100% video platform. Uh, that's just what people want to consume. They don't want to read anymore. Reading is very, I don't know, 2005 or something like that. Uh, so they want, they want video, and when they gamble, they want to enjoy video. So I think, um, I think that allows us also to entertain the players in a better way, um, rather than if we just had animations. So um, there's something very human about it. And with that, obviously, comes things like errors and mistakes, and people say funny things and all that sort of stuff. But that's the authenticity of it that I think people really enjoy. And, um, and it allows us to really celebrate with players and you feel like you have a friend on the other side of the camera. So I'd say that's really our, our competitive strength. And, um, and then technically we're very sound. Just streaming in real time to you know, millions of players is, is a very difficult tech challenge. And so we've gotten particularly strong in that arena as well. First of all, we're consumers of it. If you define it as Netflix and uh, YouTube and all that sort of stuff, we're all on it all day long. And, um, and they are so big that they set users' expectations. So if they move a button or if they uh, change an interface to a swipe or something like that, we have to be particularly aware because increasingly players are gonna expect that behavior from our games. So that's one of the things we do. Um, if you define it as a more local competition like other game makers, uh, we've got a team uh, internally called the I-Team, and what they do is, is they do nothing but see how our games uh, live in the wild on operators' websites, and they play from the top 75 devices. So you've got, you walk in there and it's just devices everywhere, every phone you can imagine, every computer and tablet. And, uh, and so they play our games in live environments uh, with uh, real money. 
uh, small sticks so that they can see how our games interact on um, different browsers, different devices, different sites, different everything. And, um, and then they also go out while they're, while they're out there in the, in the wild, so to speak, and they look at our competition and they see how our, what, what new games are being launched. Um, typically, anytime anything is done in the live casino space, I'll get a report on it you know, immediately upon launch. And, um, and we like to see what others are up to. Uh, we're not particularly um, interested from a, uh, from a perspective of um, influencing our roadmap or anything like that. We're, we're more looking at like maybe video game companies and um, things like that for inspiration uh, to, to determine our roadmap. But when we look at what the competition is doing, it's interesting to know, people ask us about it. We want to know ourselves, we're curious. Um, we want to know if they're, uh, if they're going the same direction as us um, and, um, and uh, just generally what they're up to. So uh, yeah, we're pretty much on top of it. One of the things that we did particularly well is we just sort of valued speed over, um, over maybe perfect decision making. So everybody took their respective domains um, operations got hit the hardest, but um, you know we started closing a, a, some tables and we started thinking about the impact that that's going to have on the network. And as we did that, um, each department head, um, and then even within departments, people were just making decisions rapidly and moving uh, to keep the games running at all times, um, and then doing it in, in a safe manner where employees wouldn't be at risk of of spreading or anything like that. And so. Um, really seeing the team uh, sort of move super fast to uh, address all these challenges and you know there's no playbook you know companies say oh we have a disaster recovery plan uh, for, for, for every kind of disaster you could imagine well not this one uh, and if you did what you quickly realized was it was outdated after like the second day when governments came in and said you can't be in the building anymore or whatever they, they said. So uh, it was a really big learning experience on the operational side and we got through it and got through it well. We've got some really exciting stuff coming. Uh, we're launching a game here shortly called Crazy Time and I can confidently say it's uh, the most expensive game ever made. It took the most man hours uh, and I think it's the craziest game ever made. And while personal opinion, and maybe I'm biased, I think it's literally the most fun casino game ever made. We tried to set a standard, uh, or achieve a standard, that um, it would be fun enough to watch, even if you weren't playing. Literally like a game show on television, where there's just constant bonus rounds and madness, and there's, there's, um, there's uh, <laughs> it's got everything from a coin flip to these pick-a-box games, a Plinko game, uh, where you drop the puck and da -da 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 -da, it kind of comes down and it's just madness in every which way you can imagine loaded with bonuses um, and uh, I think players are really gonna love it um, the, uh, the the signs from ice have been super positive um, it got an incredible reception at ice and we we're really proud of that I think it'll be the best launch we've ever had that's coming soon uh, we're also doing the most requested game we've ever had and that's craps um, it's a really hard game to get right for a variety of different reasons, but I think we've really nailed it. We've got this cool, like 1920s speakeasy, Al Capone underground vault style studio. We've got this mechanical arm uh, called Mr. Lucky who tosses the dice for the players. And uh, I think it's just gonna be a smash up game. Uh, and that'll be really strong for our American audience as well, but, but we're, gonna, we're gonna run it in Europe and I think players are really gonna enjoy it. There's a lot of players that have always been curious about craps, but maybe intimidated to go to the table. And um, now they'll be able to do it uh, in the comfort of their own homes uh, for low stakes. And um, I think they're really gonna enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to craps. Are we interested in new verticals? Um, we get asked that all the time. Um, we've got a lot of clients and, um, and uh, we only provide live casino to them at the moment. And so people always ask, you know, does Evolution want to be in slots or sports book or, or other areas? And um, I take a little bit of a different approach to it. Um, I ask the question, why would you want to be in slots or, you know, any other vertical? Just, but take slots. It would be to get slot players. And um, slot players play slots. 
But we've done a pretty good job with our game show genre, which includes games like Dreamcatcher and Deal or No Deal and Monopoly Live, and now uh, Mega Ball, the newest member of the, of the game show family. And we can see the slot players coming over. They are coming over. So um, it's an interesting question to ask, do you need slots to get slot players? And um, probably you do to get, a whole, to get a lot of them, but you can, you can certainly get some of them or an awful, a, a good chunk of them um, with uh, slot-like games that are done in a live format where they can have big bonuses and make big money, have something to dream about, super visual, really good sounds, all those sorts of things. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, when we think about, uh, as chief product officer, I think a little bit less about new verticals or new markets um, than I do about how to go and get new types of players. We did a game called Mega Ball recently, and this game is a bouncing ball game. and in its purest form, it's make lines and make money. If you get more lines on a card, it's a five by five bingo card. The more lines you make, the more money you make. Then at the end, we draw a mega ball, where if you make any lines with that ball, it can pay up to a hundred times uh, the otherwise would be prize. So um, it can get pretty high. So 5,000 is the max prize times a hundred gets you very, very high. So um, a game like that, will go and get bingo players, but it's not a bingo game. It's just you versus the casino trying to achieve lines. A game like Deal or No Deal or Monopoly Live can go and get slot players. Uh, we have a really clean, simple game called Top Card, um, uh, which is done in a, in a format called Football Studio. And they get on there and they talk about football and all that sorts of stuff, and it's a really clean game. and. Um, and that can attract sports players. So we, we will go into new markets. As markets open up, we'll be there for sure. Um, but most of those markets will like the games that players in other markets like as well. Um, there, there are some regional differences when you go to Asia or the United States. It can, it can vary a bit. Um, but, but overwhelmingly, the way we think about it is, is types of players, not types of players.